Right, time to fulfill a request and revisit a classic. Right, this revisit is from a video I did a couple of years ago at this stage. It was back when the channel just started and I was, wasn't was talking in videos. And what I'm going to do was a wand. Uh, I've asked a lot of times could I redo it and talk my way through it. So that's what I'm going to do. And with the new... Um, how can we put this? Magic-based movie coming out. I'm not going to say the name of the movie or the name of the main character because I get done for a copyright claim apparently that happens quite a lot uh, I figured this would be a good time to do it right basics are this is a piece of tiger wood it's an off cut it's about two inches by two inches and uh, the important part is it's 13 inches long I was told when I started doing once first I did a bit of research and I was told that a wand is 13 inches long so that's the way I always do them right tool wise you can basically use anything you want right sometimes i use a skew my favorite thing to use is this uh continental spindle gouge because i just like using it uh right first thing i'm going to do of course is round it off right so we'll do that and then we get on with this Right, then I'm rounded up there. As I said, it's just uh, this is rough, roughly getting it round. Right, it doesn't matter the finish of that matter. Right, now what I want to do is the handle, which I'm gonna put around about there. Right, maybe there. Right now, a wand has three parts. That's all I've been told. Right. right. There is the handle. There's the blade, and there's the piece in the middle. Now, I have one of those things, that, one of those brain fog things, where I can't say that piece, but what I'll do is I'll put it in here as a caption, right? Uh, right, the important things with a wand blank. <coughs> you can do them cross grain. I've done them cross grain. But they're quite difficult because the cross ground picks up a vibration it's very weak and they snap easily if you can get it so if you look at this one the grain is running straight up and down this right that's the easiest ones to do them with right and with a wand always work from this end that way right and now i don't mean necessarily cut that way but i mean go this way finish this end then work your way down if you start here what's going to happen is you're going to make here very weak and when you're down here, there's an awful lot of pressure on it and it'll wobble and vibrate and you could snap it. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is bring this part down uh, to roughly the thickness I want for the blade. Right? I'm going to do it down to a bit there. As I said, it doesn't matter what tool you use on this, whatever your personal preference is. That is very roughly the width of the thickest part of the wand. Right. Now, let's start putting the shape in. As I said, working from this end that way. <clears throat> right. Don't get greedy with these and try and take too big of a bite. Now, as for one design, your imagination. You can do whatever you want with it.
Now when you're doing these, the thing you do not want is you do not want whatever tool you have to go underneath. Stop this for a minute, right? You do not want whatever tool you're using to go underneath here, right? In between the tool rest and that, because it guarantees you're gonna snap that one. Start bringing the handle down. Right. Here's that transition piece that I can't say at the moment. Now, try and match the handle in with this. So if you're after doing sharp embellishments here, make the embellishments here sharp. If you're after doing rounded ones like this, make it roundy. Just try and make the one, one kind of cohesive piece. Now you see I'm leaving like flat ridges there. Don't worry about it, I'm doing that for a reason. I want to show you something. Right, now I want to get in there with a detail gouge to get rid of a load of this. So. Now if you're not comfortable enough to work this close to the truck, leave yourself more scrap on the end. Right, as I said, as it says on the end of all my videos, right, this is how I do it. If you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, do it the way you feel comfortable. Right, now that's very rough for a wand, right? Now, what the reason I left it like this is, right, right there isn't the perfect cut, they're flats, right? But I don't want them flats, I want them rounded. Right, if you get to this stage and you say you're down here and you see something, something that's up here that you don't like, do not go back and cut it with a chisel, right? You're asking for the one to snap if you do that, right? If you have excellent tool control, then fire away. If you don't, and I've said this a lot of times before, there's nothing wrong with grabbing a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and sorting it out without risking 
uh, blowing your piece up, right? Which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Now, what I'll do is I'll leave the cameras running when I'm sanding it, right? But I'll speed it up just so you can see what's happening. See how much shape you can actually put in something with a simple piece of sandpaper. Now, I'm going to mask up, of course, as I always do, especially with my last little long escapade. So I sound slightly muffled, but that's because of the mask. Forgot to turn on the air cleaner. So do now. Right now, as I said, I'm gonna just gonna speed through this. I'm not gonna talk. Is number one, I'm very muffled, and number two, my dust extraction system is quite loud, so you're not gonna be able to hear me anyway. Right then, that's the 80 gritting done. Now you can see what the 80 grit is done. Right? I've taken away all the roof that was there. Right? They're all now rounded, so it's all that. And there was no chance of that snapping. As I said, if you've got, if you've got something wrong up this way, don't go back on it with a skew or whatever tool you're using. Just use sandpaper. Right, now I'll continue on with this. Setting this down and I'll come back on and do the oxygen grit. Doing the Yorkshire grit, and um, we'll, we'll do the Yorkshire grit bit while we're here. Uh, right, in this one, I'm gonna try and answer a question that I was asked. I mean, seems to be a video for answering questions. Uh, right, the question I was asked was uh, Is there any tools for wood turning that you shouldn't use? And the answer is no, uh, except for really bad cheap ones, okay, especially lights, right? Uh, there is a type of lathe out there, and it's basically it's dangerous, okay? You'll know it, it's really cheap, it's probably the cheapest one you'll find new. It's a mini lathe, a desktop, basically, right? But how you'll know it, right now it's sold under a load of different brands, but how you'll know it is the beds and the frame are made up out of what is basically one inch box line. Right. Uh, you'll know it when you see it, put it this way. That lathe is the one thing I, I would tell people not to use. Right? As far as tool wise goes, the best you can afford. It's that simple. The best you can afford. Right? There can be an awful lot of tool snobbery. Uh, or is it, I only use this maker, I only use that maker. You shouldn't be using that maker, you should be using this maker. Right. If the steel's good, use it. Right. Uh, I said the best you can afford is the simple answer to it. Right. Uh, same with chucks, lathes, everything to do with wood turning. The best you can afford. If you're starting off. You buy whatever you can, right? Now, something, uh, there's kind of a saying in the wood turning world, the cheapest part is the lathe, it is. If you're starting off wood turning, the basics you're going to need are a lathe, chisels, 
and some way to sharpen them. They're the absolute basics you're gonna need. And as I said, don't get stuck into tool snobbery. Buy the best you can afford. Right. Um, if you can, stay clear of the stuff that's like on Wish and uh, Alibaba and all that. Right. Well, basically, that's the best I can answer on that question. Right, and there is our wand Yorkshire widget. Now I am not going to put uh, wax on this. There, There's a couple of things I don't put wax on. Wands are one of them because I was told that wands aren't shiny. Wands aren't really shiny. Right Now I'm after doing all that with everything still between centres. Right. Well, let's go as between centres, between each other and centre. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to part off this end. Right. And I'm gonna use a skill for it. Right. Uh, all I wanna do is part it off. Right. Into roughly a kind of a point shaped something. Right. I do not want this really pointy. Because little Tommy, if he gets this, you do not want him shoving it into little sister's eyeball. Right? Now, get that out of the way. Right, now this is loose. Right, it's loose on that end. Right, but I want to. Uh, sand at that end a little bit. There's no need to. There's no need to go to eighty and stuff on it uh, because there's no shaping to do on it. So I'm just going to grab a piece of just a piece of one fifty. Right. I'm going to hold here. And I'm just going to finish shape that end. Now you can make these ends as thick or as thin as you want. As I said, this is just. This is basically an impulse boy wand. It's quick and it's simple. Uh, there's nothing too fancy about it. You can make ones as fancy as you want. A bit of too far to go to head. I swear to God, my brain is actually getting worse. I had a piece of too far to here a second ago. Yeah. There we go, there it is. There it is. Right. Now, where was it? Oh, yeah. You can make ones as simple or as uh, complicated as you want. This is what I class as my impulse boy wand. It's quick and it's simple. Right. Yeah. Let's go have a with that. Hear that sound? I'm burnishing the top of this. That's it. Top of that is now burnished. Right. Now, as I said, this is my impulse boy wand, so quick and simple. In there, I'm just going to park off the narrow parking tool. Right. And I'm going to end up with a flat base on it. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because, as I said, it's one of my quick ones. These sell quick and they sell very easily. And they sell quite cheap. But I'm, uh, I've, there's another video there of, of me doing an expensive one. I'll leave a link up there to it. I'll be doing one of my expensive ones. Right. Now, all that I've got left to do is to sand the bottom of that. Right. So I'll shove that in there.
And then just I'll just quickly sand this down. Now some people have a problem with putting a chuck into a headstock. My personal view on it is if you're only putting pressure that direction, it's fine. If you're putting a lot of pressure sideways or anything on it, it's not. Not without a lock on it. You know, one of the locking bars that comes through the back and screws into the chuck. But uh, for just doing this, it's fine. And as I said, that's my opinion on it. Lots of people have opinion on it. Lots of people, sorry, lots of people have an opinion on it and they are completely and utterly entitled to their opinion. Uh, if you don't like doing it, uh, Pete over at Twisted Trees has this little yoke that uh, fits into a truck to hold it. I'll leave a link to Pete's, to that video Pete's below. And uh, you can go over there and do that if you want. So th this is something that me and Pete do kind of, kind of disagree on. So I think this is fine, Pete doesn't. Right. Now to Yorkshire grit that bit. Just gonna grab a piece of kitchen towel. Grab the Yorkshire grit. Put a little dab in the middle of it. Wrap the kitchen towel around there. Hold that there. And just roll it into it. And there's the end finished nicely. Right. And there you have a quick and simple impulse boy wand. Uh, as I said, redone, well, revisited uh, with me talking in it as requested. Right, so it's, it's 14 inches long and they sell really well. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, if you wouldn't mind, click and like on the video. And I'll see you in the next one.